Did y'all ever know that? Yeah. Uh, but two weeks ago, we finished chapter 10. And Brother Bob, chapter 10 was a good chapter, wasn't it, brother? Uh, in fact, as we went through chapter 10, I thought, wow, I don't even know if it could get any better. But then we get to chapter 11. Chapter 11 is pretty good, too, pretty isn't good, it, brother? Yeah. <laughs> uh, it sure is. In fact, uh, I'm going to put Bob on the spot right here um, in uh, asking this question. Bob, if you were to sum up chapter 11 with one word, what would that word be for chapter 11? Love. Love. That's a good word to sum up a chapter, right? Love. Now, Bob, if you were to ask me that same question, what do you think I would say? No, actually, no. why don't you just ask me the same question? <laughs> what would you say if, if you had one word, if is, you would... Is your mic on? So your wife is asking if your mic... Uh, is his mic on? Okay. Yep, is it's it? on. She could yeah, not... I, I, is it on? Yeah, it's on. I just need to talk in it, don't I? <laughs> What is the one word that you would use to describe If Bob them? took the word love, then I'm going to take the word obey. Obey. Very good. So if we were going to, if we were going to sum up chapter 11, we would sum up chapter 11 with love and obey. And I just want you, as we study through this text, to have that in mind. And I, I encourage you to take time to underline, circle, uh, notate some way in your word when we get to uh, something that is about love or obey uh, in the scripture. And so, uh, actually, I need to go there. We're in Deuteronomy. Uh, I've got to find it myself. Sorry. Deuteronomy chapter 11. Yeah, and, and as we go through that, we'll see that love and obey are rewarded. And God honors that and rewards that. And that is the main theme of this chapter uh it, it he absolutely does uh, when you it's so interesting as you go through this you're going to we're going to talk about love we're going to talk about obey and then he's going to through it talk about if you do this here's the rewards and if you don't here's some things that aren't so good sure. and so um uh we're going to let's dive into it let's look at, at chapter 11 verse number one. Oh, and ruth is going to be reading for us tonight Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God and keep his charge, his statutes, his judgments, and his commandments always. Now, wait just a minute. What's the theme of the, the chapter? Somebody tell me, what do you think the theme of this chapter is? Love and obey, right? Did you all see that in this first verse? Notice what it says right there in the very first verse. What does it tell you to do? Love. And obey. Keep his commandments. So it says keep his commandments. Isn't, isn't keeping his commandments obeying him? Now, now it says that. And that is absolutely a good theme. And the very first verse starts off with the theme of the, of the chapter. But did anyone notice anything else in there? Do you notice anything else? Go ahead. Betty Wasman. Always. Always. Somebody over there said it too, but I like Betty Wassman better. <laughs> <laughs> Notice that word always. What is it that you are to always do? Beverly, what is it? Love and obey. Love and obey. Yeah, yeah we, you know, we can do many things for God, hundreds of things. But really what he wants is to love him. And if we love him, and what is loving him? What would you say loving God is? What is loving God? Whoa, 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 whoa. did y'all hear that? John, if you love me, you will what? Keep my commandments. John love. 14, 15. Love and obey. Bob, can yeah. I ask you a question? Oh, well, I already did, but I'm going to ask you another one. <laughs> love? Oh. Yeah. Is it, is it possible for me to love God and not keep it? Well, let's not word it that way. Is it, is it okay for me to pick and choose which one of these things I should obey? Absolutely not. <laughs> it's really not, is it? You, 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 that's not love. 
Well, uh, so, so follow what Bob said right there. It's not love if you are going to pick and choose which things to follow or not follow. Right. You don't really love him. Right. You don't love him. We may say that we do, and many people do, but they don't follow his commandments. We pick and choose. And 1 John 4, 20, 22 says, if you hate your brother, you don't love the Lord. So you can say all you want to, that I love God, but if you hate your brother or have something against him, then you cannot love God. So it is, you know, we think of love a lot of times as a, um, oh, a feeling, an emotion. And yes, that is a, but with God, it is making a choice, a choice to follow him. A commitment to him. Uh, Bob, oftentimes in my, when I've marriage, been with marriage counseling with people, I've talked about love being a verb. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's an action, action. Uh, that, that you do. That love is a verb uh, uh, when you break it down. But to your point, yeah. love is obeying. obeying. It's, it's an action, obeying his commands. Uh, I, I find it interesting how many people inside the church... Um, can hear message after message about following God's word and, and loving God. And they say they love God, but yet I know the way they're living their life. They're not obeying his commandments. And I, I come back and say that very thing. How can you say that you love God if you're not going to obey his commandments? And I'm not saying that, that we're perfect, but I am saying that I, I think a true believer, whenever they realize that they're in sin or something's going on, I think they repent of it. And by the way, repentance is a brokenness that... that, that I, I know in my life, Brother Bob, when I have come to that realization, man, it brings tears to my eyes. It's not that it's emotional, but it is emotional because true repentance is a brokenness of who you are. Right. And most people or many people don't know how to get there. They're not broken over their sin. They are just living a life, and they go out into the world, and they do these things that they've done so many times and time and time again, and then they turn around and come into the churches and so on and say, I love Act God. Act like everything's okay. And, and by the way, we've used this word many times. It's justify. Oh, I, I, Ray, you raised your hand like 30 minutes ago and I forgot. Oh. Uh, hold on. Let me finish this thought. <laughs> the people justify their actions and say, it's okay for me to live in this sin. It is never okay for a person to continue to live in sin. Sorry, Brother Ray. Now I can come back to you. And in fact, uh, I thought of that song when I was writing this lesson uh, because I was like, that song might actually be better worded, love and obey. I was like, wouldn't it be interesting if we sung, sang that song, love and obey instead of trust and obey. I think the trust and obey is a great song. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But as I looked at chapter 11, that's what I thought. Candy? Oh, I love absolutely what she said. Did you hear what Candy said? That a lot of times people get to regret, but it, that regret and repentance is two separate things. You can regret, but getting to repentance is, is, is different. Like you could regret that you left your phone on. <laughs> You repent when you turn it off. <laughs> Just kidding, brother. Uh, so, yeah. 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 Yeah, regret is, I'm sorry I got caught a lot of times. Repentance is... Man, I am separated from God. This is, this is a violation of the love and obey that we are taught to do.
And that's why love comes first. Because when the scripture says, if you love the Lord, that God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, all those other things are going to be taken care of. Because he knows that the love is going to motivate you to do the keep uh, of the commandments. So that's why whenever somebody continues to live in sin, uh, and then they come in and say they love the Lord, I have to say, I don't, I'm not really sure you do. I mean, you can say you do, but do they you don't. really? No. No. <laughs> According to the scripture, they don't. According to the scripture, if you're living in sin and continue to do that, you don't love the Lord. Because if you did, you'd keep his commandments. Yeah. You wouldn't be in that. Going to rescue that, yeah. Um, and and I, I will say this, by the way, I love what you, you said, Rebecca, because uh, she was, if you didn't hear her, she was saying that if um, some people that, that live that life, uh, they actually see, see God more as a Santa Claus, somebody's not going to do anything wrong to them, and so they can continue to live in their sin, that they don't really love him the way that we should, uh, which, which rem I feel compelled to say this, that I think that's one of the dangers of the doctrines of once saved, always saved. Now, I believe in the doctrine of once saved, always saved. But, but I do believe that doctrine has within it the, the ability for people to live exactly like Rebecca just described. That you, well, I'm saved, so I, it doesn't matter. I can go out and do, do whatever I want. In fact, Scripture actually warns us about that and says no. In fact, it says God forbid that you would do that. Right. Um, but I think to the people that have in their mind say that they're in love with the Lord, but in their heart they've never truly loved the Lord, I think there's going to be a great wake-up call for them. So. Yes, there is. And as we go through life, it tells about the blessings that we have because of our obedience and our love for God. Now, how many things are people missing what are the blessings that they are missing by that? Um, I happen to believe that maybe, and I think Paul was probably one of them, God gives us something sometimes where we have to depend on him. Mm. And it might be a good thing that we are dependent on him going through life. Otherwise, we think, hey, everything's all right. I've got this prosperity and things are going well. Look what I've done when we have to turn. And the children of Israel was much like that. Yeah, John. And that's what it motivates you to. I love not just trying to sneak across the line to check the box. It's, it's, it's a true obeying, obeying out of love, doing it the right way, doing it the right way. You know, Matthew 6.33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. And what happens? All these things will be added to you. So it's our job, first of all, is to do that. And you remember... When you were in love, maybe for the first, second, third time, and how, <laughs> I didn't say that, Ruth, uh, <laughs> uh, how you were consumed, remember being consumed, that's all you can think about, they don't see the warts, do they, they see all the nice things that you are and how perfect you are, and man, a soulmate and all of this. But they get over it. I mean, sorry. <laughs> the warts show up, don't they? <laughs> Once a frog, always a frog. <laughs> uh, but we should be consumed with God. We should be 
should be on our mind, and that should be a way of life, a 24-7, the way we live, knowing that he cares for us and that we can't go wrong because he never fails. And, and, Bob, there is no justification for anything that is contrary to God's word. No, not one. There's, there's not anything that, that you can justify and be right that is contrary to God's word. I don't care how hard you try. I, I, Bob and I have shared with you um, examples of people um, literally living in adulterous relationships. Somebody's cheating on their wife, and they say, this is what God wanted. Remember us talking about yeah. that? Yeah. And I'm like, it's, that's impossible. God would never call you to do something that was contrary to his word and, at all. And I've had a grown man tell me, God told me to do that. And, and it was, and yeah, a grown man, <laughs> and, it was, and it was an adulterous relationship. Right. And I said, no way. In fact, I got in this way. That, that just really irritated me to, for him to put God in that position. I mean, I was, I stuck my finger in this place, folks. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a little shorter now, but I still did it. <laughs> still did it. Don't you ever say that God told you to sin. Don't ever say that. I mean, it just goes like it's got chill bumps now just thinking about it. Don't, don't tell me that. <laughs> uh, and, and somebody certainly can't say that they love God in, in this situation uh, and, and be living that way. Uh, we got to keep going. <laughs> we're, going. We're only on verse 1. <laughs> Don't forget the last word of the verse. You need to have it underlined, boxed, or something. The word is always. And folks, so many times we like to take that word and relate it to keeping his commandments, and that is true. I think that the word always relates to the love and to the work or into the, the keeping of the commandments. That word always is to always love him and to always keep his commandments. Uh, and uh, you're going to see this theme uh, through this verse, um, through this chapter. Let's go ahead and read uh, verses 2 through 7. Know today that I do not speak with your children who have not known and who have not seen the chastening of the Lord your God, his greatness and his mighty hand and his outstretched arm, his signs and his acts which he did in the midst of Egypt to Pharaoh king of Egypt and to all his land, what he did to the army of Egypt, to their horses and their chariots, how he made the waters of the Red Sea overflow them as they pursued you, and how the Lord had, has destroyed them to this day. What he did for you in the wilderness until you came to this place. And what he did to Dathan and Abram, the sons of Eliab, the son of Reuben. How the earth opened its mouth and swallowed them up, their households, their tents, and all the substance that was in their possession in the midst of all Israel. But your eyes have seen every great act of the Lord which he did. Um, we, we told you the theme of this verse or this chapter was what were the, what's the theme? Love and obey. But we also said you're going to see a pattern in here. And what was that pattern? Rewards for following, for loving and obeying and not doing it, the consequences of it, right? Did you notice that's exactly what he painted here in these two, I mean, in chapter, I mean, verses two through seven? What were the rewards of, of them following him? The what? The enemy be taken care of? What, what happened? He protected them? How did he do it? What did he do? The army, the, 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 the Red Sea. Y'all remember the story of the Red Sea? It just talked about it. They follow God and the Red Sea event took place. They went through, the waters crashed down on, on the others. And then he tells another story. What was the other story that he told? 
the earth open. Both of these ex examples are things that are parting. One of them is the water so that they can go through on dry land and the army gets destroyed. The other one is the earth opening. And remember when the earth opening, what happened? These people fell in. And by the way, did we go back and read that or was it in this text? It's in number 16. In number 16, <clears throat> when you read that, every, every part of their possessions went into it, it's like if if bob and i are living here and we got all this stuff i'm one of those people and the earth opens and sucks me under in my tent and my family and except for my kids and, and we get sucked down into the ground and, and bob's house is just fine that's what you see happen there and why did it happen to them disobedience yes disobedience disobedience uh, this is where Korah, if you remember that uh, story in the Bible there in Numbers uh, 16, and he is actually the first cousin of uh, Moses. Uh, their dads were brothers, and they were uh, the sons of Kohath, which is a son of Levi. But anyway, uh, they challenged the leadership of Moses. They challenged it, and uh, Korah did that, and these two, two sons of Reuben also instigated that. They were involved in it, and God brought judgment upon them for their disobedience. Now, now, now think about what happened. They had seen the miracle and the hand of God, but, it, but because of their disobedience, there were still consequences from God as well. Folks, you can have God move in your life, and God works an amazing miracle. And if you respond still wrong to that amazing miracle that God's done, there can still be consequences because of the way that you responded to it. You can say, wow, look at what God has done in my life. And then get all prideful about what God has done in your life. And the next thing you know, you just lost everything oh, that he had just blessed you with. That's, that's right. And interesting here, and we read about the history of God, don't we? That's what he's telling them, the history of their past. What do we study? History of man, don't we? Uh, wouldn't we be much better off if we studied about the history of God and what he has done? And we would benefit from that much more than the history of man. It says there in that verse number seven, but, you have, but your eyes have seen every great act of the Lord which he did. He described two of them. Do you notice that the great act also included the consequences to what had happened? A lot of times we like to think of great acts of God or just the miracles, you know, the good things that happen. It seems to me like Moses is saying a great act of God is also whenever the consequences come. So what do you want? Do you want the blessings by the obedience or do you want the judgment? Yeah, which ones do y'all want? Let's just take a poll. Do y'all want the <laughs> blessings or the cursings? <laughs> blessings. Okay. All right. Good. 100% blessings. Okay. And if you want the blessings, what do you do? Love and obey. Love and always. 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 Scott? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's talking to the generation that saw these acts and not to those that did not. But he's telling them, you know, you've seen this. You've seen these actions. And, and in fact, I, we've painted the picture many times. He's talking to these three million Israelites that are about to cross over into the Jordan, and he's kind of recapping their history. Uh, you can just imagine him saying, all right. Everybody that is 40 years old and younger, sit down. I'm just talking to the ones that are standing now. And that's right. what he, he would yeah. have done right here. Yeah. He said. Uh, all right. Let's uh, read verse number 8. Therefore, you shall keep every command right. which I command you all right. today. All right. Not too far. It says, therefore. Now, what is therefore, therefore? 
See what was there before. What was there before? Love and obey. Always, or there's, or there's blessings and cursings. And because of that, therefore, what does it say? What are we calling that? Julie got it. Obey. Remember, we told you there was a theme to this chapter. Love and obey. We see obey again. All right, you can read the, uh, just, just do all of verse 8. Actually, just do 8 and 9. Therefore, you shall keep every commandment which I command By the you way, today. <laughs> there is a little word there that you can't forget. And what is that word? Every, every reminds you of what word? Always. He just in verse number one said to love and obey always. Here as he's saying it, he says, how, how, how many of his commandments do you keep? Every one of them. All right, I'm sorry. Why don't you go ahead and read verses eight and nine. I don't know what's taking you so long. <laughs> Therefore, you shall keep every commandment which I command you today that you may be strong and go in and possess the land which you cross over to, to possess, and that you may prolong your days in the land which the Lord swore to give your fathers to them and their descendants, a land flowing with milk and honey. Um, I think I, can I do something real quick? I just sure. thought of this. Hold on. Hold on. I got to find it. No, you don't <laughs> get a vote. Um, hey, I, I want you, I, Maybe I shouldn't do this, but I'm going to jump down to verse number uh, 24 because he's talking about, he's, and look what he's doing. He's talking about the land that they're going to get. Now, who's going to get this land? The children of Israel, right? Jump down to verse number 24. I want, you to, I want to show you something that I found very interesting, and I hope you all do, and I hope you don't get mad at me for this, but go ahead and read verse number 24. Every place on which the sole of your foot treads shall be yours from the wilderness and Lebanon, from the river, the river Euphrates, even to the western sea, shall be your territory. Did y'all see what that just said? Beverly got it. From the river to the sea. Have y'all been hearing that in the news lately? Now, I don't know about you, but Deuteronomy was written a long time ago. And Deuteronomy said a long time ago that from the river to the sea, it was going to belong to who? Israel. 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 I might not have should have gone there, Brother Bob. Yeah. But <clears throat> That's from here. This is a Euphrates. It was to scale. And, of course, here's the sea. But you can see <clears throat> what happened is they didn't take all the land that God had given to them. And only during David's time did they come close to having all this area over here. Even though God had, had promised it. it to them, they didn't fully obey. It was a divine providence that they would get that. But they had to, the soles of their feet had to land on it, in other words. Their soles of their feet. He had given it to them to take. Anyway, sorry for that uh, That. Uh, little little detour. I just found it very interesting since people are saying that all the time. You might want to be equipped as somebody comes up and talks to you about uh, from the river to sea. You might say, have you ever read Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse number 24? You might go read it. Because it was, it was God's children long before a group of Palestinians moved in. Anyway. Nope. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you may. <laughs> Do they still have that promise to take to take that land? Could they take that land? Yeah. Right, they didn't. They didn't, they, and they, they didn't did. because of their disobedience. God had planned the entire time that it was going to be theirs. And I think, are you asking, if they wanted that today, they, could they go possess that land? Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I know you're not. <clears throat> yeah. Right. They didn't, they didn't carry that promise. Um, I think probably not. And I don't have any 
basis for that other than we know where God had told them to go in and take the land and they didn't and they were supposed to take this city and they didn't and God told them the consequences and they decide they do it it's too late in other words they resisted initially and said no Lord I'm not going to do it now we'll do it and he says so based on that <laughs> I would say probably not a good idea <laughs> yeah and and I'll go one step further just in my own mind is that was before the time of the Gentiles had began and now that the time of the Gentiles have begun which we're living in now not that they they don't they don't own or are responsible for that land I think what we've seen in 1948 is absolutely that God I think that the next thing to happen isn't it's it's about the land but it's really about the rapture of the church and the the years of tribulation that's going to come and wake up Israel I think that the focus is no longer on from the river to the sea for them it's about their salvation and so I think I think they had the chance to do that and they didn't and now that chance was yeah. the consequences of their disobedience is they're never going to own that completely. yeah they did have this land here that's where the two and a half tribes lived in what is Jordan today so they did have quite a bit of land there but it didn't go over to the river Euphrates uh, really? the, this is this Jordan, is Jordan here this is Iran over here uh, Saudi Arabia down in here uh, so and Syria is still up here. Syria is up there, and here's Lebanon up above that. So we still see those countries in there uh, that have that. And, of course, over in here is Iraq. This is where they're – this was Mesopotamia that was uh, in between the rivers there that we read about in the Old Testament. Um, one note that I have uh, on these two verses is – remembering the promises that God has made in Moses's recap here he he reminds them that God has promised them this land and it's been several hundred years uh, since they received this promise but God's promise is still true uh, for this group of people uh, right here and I only say that to say folks whenever God has in his word a promise for you that promise is a promise forever that he has made to you. It's a, uh, it's a promise uh, that we can keep, that, yes. that we know that he will keep, I guess yes. I should say. Yes, and as we go through life, and I'm sure you've had promises in your life. Maybe they haven't come about yet, but if it's truly of God, they will. I've had a number of them, and I've got one going on now. <clears throat> that I think is going to be a divine providence that God is working through. And very seldom do you know that. So I'm a little cautious about even saying anything about it. Very seldom. You know, sometimes we've got it worked out for God, and that's what I don't want to do because <laughs> it never works out like I think it's going to work out, but God works it out like he's planning it still better than what I could anticipate. But this one, I think God is working that is a divine providence. And isn't it amazing whenever God, and I, I know some of y'all might not like this saying, but I, I do. It's a, when God shows up and shows off. I mean, God shows up every day. Yeah. But isn't it just special whenever yeah. something like that happens and it just makes your faith even that much stronger? That's right. and, and, and we should dream dreams. We should see visions of God working in our lives. We should have those goals that uh, that we're seeking to glorify him through it's not for ourselves it's for him all about him and sometimes we let i get in the way yeah it is so easy to happen uh bob we're gonna have to shut it down i see it's 733 back okay. there in that big bright clock that's back there does anybody have another thought question concern rotten tomatoes jason raised his hand on that one
that is so important. I am so glad you brought that up, listening to a lie. Folks, you can listen to a lie out of people who claim to be men or women of God. And they can, they can take people and manipulate God's word to make it seem like it's right when it is wrong. It's exactly what Satan did in the Garden of Eden. And so, and I, and I say that to warn you about what you listen to on YouTube. I, sometimes, I, you know, when you watch YouTube, it, it thinks it knows what you want to listen to. And so you listen to something uh, spiritual or about prophecy. They start sending you everything there is out there about prophecy. I'm just going to warn you, be really careful with some of those people out there that are preaching all the prophecy stuff. Uh, and, and you need to be careful because it's a lie. It can be a lie. You have to be really careful. Mm-hmm. False Amen. Mm-hmm. False prophets and false teachers. Second right right Peter chapter two. Then there you go. Excellent. It's sad. It really is sad. People buy in. People buy into the lie. They buy into the lie. Anyone else? If not, let's be dismissed. Father, Lord God, we come before your holy throne. We bow before you. We worship you. You're an amazing, wonderful God. Father, we just ask that you'll have your hand upon us. And even now as we ended this conversation about following a lie, I ask that your Holy Spirit, the one that dwells with inside us, the one that your word says will lead us into all truth, may be, that be what guides us, not people on YouTube uh, or, or someone's personal opinion. That, Father, that we're led by your Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth. And what is truth? It is your word. So, Father, let us be students of your word led by your spirit to know what your truth is and not what this world says it is. Father, I ask you to help us as we study this, uh, this uh, chapter 11 to understand the importance of love and obey all that you have commanded us to do. Father, we ask that you will be with us during our revival. I pray for Brother Alex. I, I pray that your hand will be upon him, that he would preach with boldness, full of your Holy Spirit. And that, Father, that we as a group of people would come ready to hear uh, from you. Oh, you're, I know you want to use Brother Alex, but, Father, I ask that we would open our, our minds and our hearts to hear from you and that you would move in a very powerful way, Father. Oh, may your spirit flow, flow freely upon this place. Father, have us uh, come to uh, times of repentance and praise and worship and forgiveness and love. Father, let us live out within this revival all that you have called us to, that we would always love and obey you. Oh, Father, may you move. And we ask this name of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen.